Um, so let me introduce our, our next speaker, uh, Dominic Volek, um, member of the Executive Committee of Henley and Partners. Over to you. Thank you, and it's a, it's a pleasure to be on such an esteemed panel and um, for the opportunity to comment on the opportunities for investors following COVID-19. Um, I will particularly focus on uh, Greece's highly successful residence by investment program, as well as Cyprus's post-COVID-19 opportunity with regard to both its residence and citizenship programs. I'm sure most of you attending the summit are already uh, somewhat familiar with these programs offered by both countries. Investment migration programs are not a new phenomenon. Um, in fact, ancient Athenians pioneered the practice of, of granting citizenship in return for exceptional economic contributions to the state. Fast forward uh, roughly two millennia and since the turn of the century, the number of investment migration programs has grown rapidly as more nations realize their value in the escalating competition for global capital, talent and wealth. Investment migration programs encourage affluent families to relocate and to contribute to the local economy through both entrepreneurial and consumer activity. What is more, successful applicants bring less tangible resources such as unique skill sets, valuable commercial knowledge, as well as rich global networks. Contrary to popular belief, residence and citizenship programs are not the exclusive domain of nations that are struggling economically. Um, 19 of the G20 nations, including the UK and the US, offer mechanisms to attract foreign direct investment in exchange for residence rights. And in the last 10 years, the European Union has welcomed more than 6,000 new citizens and over 100,000 new residents through such programs, along with around 25 billion euros in foreign direct investment. Cyprus is, of course, one of the top performers, generating on average 976 million euros annually. Uh, Greece has also been reaping sizable investments, averaging 250 million euros annually. Stimulating economic activity is certainly a non-negotiable for, for any sovereign uh, in the current context. And there are many direct economic benefits that nations with investment migration programs typically experience. Um, and, and in both countries' cases, these include uh, significant growth in the real estate sector and construction industry, growth in the number and size of local businesses, increased liquidity in the commercial banking system, uh, overall employment growth, um, both in terms of direct and indirect job creation, and of course, a rise in tourism, increased hotel room supply, as well as air traffic. To encapsulate, these benefits tend to be cumulative and lead to other positives such as increased tax revenues, infrastructure development, better fiscal performance and less dependence on debt and international aid. At Henley & Partners, we refer to this dynamic as sovereign equity, sophisticated global investors diversifying their global investment portfolios by buying into the sovereign state to gain a long-term yield of enhanced mobility. Sovereign equity generating investment migration programs create significant value by delivering a source of sustainable liquidity that provides both monetary and fiscal economy as it, as, it, as it is an equity injection, not increased leverage. And it can be used to drive economic growth and core infrastructure, enhancing the lives of all citizens. Greece's successful residence program has now raised over 2.2 billion euros in investment since its inception in 2013. The Golden Visa program had a record-breaking year last year in 2019, with approximately 1 billion euros in total investment, making it the best performing European residence program. This represents significant growth over previous years and attests to the quality and desirability of Greece as a residence, as well as to the success of the program's implementation. On the other hand, Cyprus's citizenship program is already one of Europe's top performers and is one of the ways in which Cyprus itself turned its economy around following the 2012-2013 banking crisis. As the program has gained momentum with increased awareness, 
So is the country's GDP, which has shown steady growth, a steady uh, growth trajectory since 2017. In July, a Bill of Amendments was passed in Cyprus aimed at safeguarding, improving and making the Cyprus Investment Program even more attractive. Um, these uh, changes included a revised donation amount, acceleration of processing time for applicants' family members and the inclusion of a new category of extended family members. Governments expect to benefit when they set up these investment migration programs and the programs provide invaluable economic security to their host countries. As we now enter the worst recession since the Great Depression, countries with operational programs are better equipped to weather the storm, as they provide a source of debt-free foreign capital to buffer the impact of the pandemic. Going forward, nations without such investment migration programs will find themselves increasingly handicapped in the global competition for both investment and talent. Cyprus and Greece have a head start and their established and successful programs already in place and with various options available to both countries to scale up and extend the impact of their programs, investment migration certainly presents a sea of opportunities for both Mediterranean countries. Thank you very much, Mr. Follett. Let me just ask you um, one question now. We're going to open up after all the speakers have spoken for, for discussion, but um, just to pick up on um, what you call um, sovereign equity and the role that it can play, the particular role that it can play now in the post-COVID situation. As for countries, especially countries such as Greece and Cyprus, which are highly dependent on tourism, which is practically non-existent, uh, now, uh, which also two countries which have very high levels of government debt. Um, so how do you, can, can um, sovereign equity really compensate, do you think, or do, how can it um, boost the economy? Sure. Uh, so so the, op the opposite of sovereign equity is sovereign debt, so essentially a central, central government's debt. Um, it is debt that's issued by the national government in a foreign currency to finance the issuing country's growth and development. If a country is not financially robust to begin with, then of course it risks defaulting on its loans, which allows global financial institutions to take the helm and inform sovereign policy decisions. Uh, many sovereign states around the globe lack the ability to raise significant funds, and short of discovering a hitherto unknown natural resource, the capacity to alleviate their debts is seriously limited. Sovereign equity, on the other hand, is the idea that instead of selling debt to finance their spending, countries are selling their equity. So sovereign equity can endow nations with a considerable source of sustainable revenue without them having to further increase debt. This capacity to raise the equity of sovereign states or to provide sovereign equity is a phenomenon uniquely facilitated by investment migration. Um, investment migration is, is, is proven to be an effective means of addressing this dilemma and is relatively untapped. As a direct injection of liquidity into a country's economy, it relieves stress on the national treasury without tying the country into debt-based obligations. Uh, and, and Greece is just one such example that recognizes the value of sovereign equity, seeing as that it introduced its, uh, its golden visa program in 2013 in an effort to direct, uh, sorry, to attract foreign investment um, to contribute to the long-term and sustainable growth of the Greek economy. And as I said earlier, the success of the program has in increased significantly in recent years and has now brought in an estimated 2.2 billion in foreign direct capital into the Greek economy. 